Welcome to HealthCast. I'm your host, Adam Patterson. We are joined today by Dr. Lindsay Riegler, an innovation specialist at Veterans Affairs, for an interview on how VA is expanding the usage of its remote patient monitoring and wearable devices within its telehealth program. VA maintains the nation's largest integrated healthcare network and has been working consistently to increase the quality and access of care for veterans who might not be able to regularly reach in-person services. The development of remote patient monitoring allows VA clinicians to have a better portrait of a patient's health, helping them keep track of potentially recurring health concerns and chronic illnesses like diabetes or hypertension to improve long-term outcomes and overall increase a veteran's quality of life. Dr. Riegler, welcome to the program. Great. Thanks, Adam, for having me. Happy to be here. Absolutely. It is great to have you. And I want to start out with an opening question about yourself. And I'm wondering, as just some general background for our audience, can you tell us about your career and your research interests and what brought you to your current role at VA? Yeah, so I am the Entrepreneur in Residence Fellow through the Office of Healthcare Innovation and Learning, and I'm also the Innovation Specialist at the Cincinnati VA Medical Center, and I'm supporting the innovation programming at the Dayton VA MC. I'm a research speech language pathologist by training, and my area of research expertise includes cognitive neuroscience for veterans with mild traumatic brain injury and cognitive deficits. Yeah, that's a really interesting combination too, that sort of technical knowledge with the with the managerial overseeing and the really encouragement of, of application of technology that seems to be your, your big focus right now. And to get down to the subject of the day, I'm wondering as a general overview, what are our wearables and other devices? You know, how would you describe and categorize remote patient monitoring? And how do these capacities provide critical information to caregivers in ways that can be used to really improve healthcare and patient outcomes? Yeah, great question, Adam. So there, the Office of Healthcare Innovation and Learning has collaborated with the Office of Connected Care to really push the envelope in terms of innovation for remote patient monitoring and wearable devices. So we have things like health applications, the Annie app, MyVA Images, Mobile Kidney. We have Fitbit. We've got Garmin, Apple Watches. We've got VA Sync My Health Data applications online for patient portals. We've got My Healthy Vet, e- new EHR technologies. Um, so really, the sky is the limit. And at this point in the ballgame, we are trying to establish the infrastructure to support remote patient monitoring for the entire enterprise so that we can maintain at the forefront of healthcare to provide the best solutions possible for veterans. Absolutely. And it sounds like, again, that infrastructure is really one of your big focus areas. And in terms of the the general shifts we've seen, let's say in the past five years or so, what have been the real big infrastructure developments VA has put in place that has allowed remote patient monitoring and devices to be used in a more comprehensive way? Yeah. So the VA healthcare system has really worked hard with um, the CTO's office, the chief technology office, to be able to integrate wearable technologies into the electronic healthcare record. And although we're not where we want to be yet, we're certainly moving in that right direction. And it's complicated by the electronic healthcare transition to Cerner from CPRS. So we we are working in parallel swim lanes while we continue to integrate within CPRS. We're also then merging into integrating into Cerner as well. So that just adds an additional complication to the to that layer of onion. Yeah, no, I can imagine it's a very technically complicated, in certain ways, sensitive program. But if I'm understanding kind of how this pays off, I can imagine, for example, you have a wearable or a device that is attached to the broader electronic health record system that can be used to really update patient information and history in a much more you know, active and real-time way, if I'm getting the uh, application here correct. Absolutely. It depends on what device we're talking about. If you're thinking about like a Fitbit or some sort of Garmin device that sends in raw data into the EHR, we also have a mechanism to send it into to both a SharePoint site where you can pull the data in kind of from a database, but we're also working to integrate and to push into the EHR so that the, the physicians and the providers don't have to go to a separate database. And that's key because that's additional step in workflow. We want to certainly maximize workflow for overworked and, and, and very much tired healthcare employees these days. So that, that's a big, a big area of um, exploration as we move forward into FY23 and beyond. Absolutely. And it sounds like really refining and making sure that kind of data communication is as labor unintensive as possible seems like a focus. And I, I want to get down to a question of a particular kind of application, because, you know, if you look at a lot of the work VA does, VA works in both like very specialized conditions, for example, rarer cancers, but also really finding ways to innovate and improve the care for particularly common healthcare conditions, you know, heart disease, hypertension, lung cancer. 
and especially diabetes as well, which if I'm understanding correctly, has a very promising uh, future and present in terms of applying wearables and, and remote monitoring. And I'm curious, how can, you know, just as some understanding for our audience, how can remote monitoring help, you know, manage and improve outcomes for a, a chronic condition like say diabetes? Sure. So we have partnered with a vendor for remote patient monitoring for the prevention of diabetic foot ulcers. Uh, there are 1.5 million veterans with diabetes and approximately one in four patients with diabetes will go on to develop an ulcer in their lifetime. And of those, 60% become infected and 20% of those infected ulcers can lead to amputation. And at-risk veterans face a five-year mortality rate of 43% after developing their first diabetic foot ulcer. So we really need to, to get on the forefront and ensure that we're managing this chronic condition appropriately. We utilize a remote patient monitoring solution called Podometrics. It's a smart mat that, that detects temperature variations in the foot. The veteran stands on the mat for 20 seconds a day. And if there, there's an algor a proprietary algorithm that the vendor has that after a certain period of time, if the veteran sh shows a temperature spike of 2.2 degrees Celsius, an alert is sent. And there's a care team that manages those alerts and escalations. They provide education to the veteran for offloading strategies. And that has really yielded a 40% reduction in emergency visits, 52% reduction in all-cause hospital admissions, and 27% reduction in all-cause outpatient visits. So we saw 73% adherence to treatment and 70% of veterans sustaining engagement after a year. That's really impressive. And I'm imagining, you know, those considerable improvements really add up both in terms of kind of the smoothness of care and reducing, you know, the, the burden on VA caregivers, but also really improving the outcomes for veterans nationwide. You'd mentioned that, you know, the mortality rate for veterans who develop a diabetic foot ulcer is considerable. And it sounds like these efforts have really kind of helped, you know, steer away from that, really will, you know, reduce those risks uh, of mortality. And getting to, uh, again, a broader structural question again, I I'm wondering, you know, looking at all of these, these wearables and these devices that have been innovated and are being in, put into wider use, how are these remote monitoring capacities being integrated within VA's increasingly sophisticated telehealth program? How are those kind of merging at this point? Point. That's a great question, and that's something that we're, we continue to iterate on um, often daily. It's important that whatever the wearable is, the, who the intended audience is, and what program office supports that, that innovation is looped in, because someone from cardiology, the needs of a cardiology wearable device is, could be very different than a device for diabetes or a device for sleep. So it's important that once the, the, the national program office has bought in, they then partner with the Office of Connected Care to develop clinical practice guidelines, standard operating procedures, and ensure that there's clinics set up, there's naming conventions, and there's stop code and, and reimbursement. We now have codes for reimbursing for remote patient monitoring so that providers can get the credit that they need to be successful in their productivity metrics. Absolutely. And it really sounds like, as you'd mentioned, kind of those clinical standards being developed and smoothed out has, has really helped kind of streamline things. So that, that's great to hear. And also, it, you know, speaking of the Office of Connected Care and a lot of the work they've been putting through in the past two, three years, you know, it sounds like remote monitoring has really helped provide for veterans in, you know, rural or potentially difficult to access areas where regular transit to a major VA medical center might be difficult or very challenging. And, you know, how are these, uh, you know, this, this, you know, increasing incorporation of, you know, remote patient monitoring really help address that, really help close that kind of care gap? Yeah, so wearables offer another layer of connection to the provider, and the hope is to identify exacerbations or change to help modify the existing care plans. We're not necessarily going to diagnose anything from a wearable, but it really allows the provider to be alerted ahead of time, and, and, it, and that helps prevent delay of care. So if we're noticing that, that someone's uh, metrics have changed based their, off of their baseline, they can reach out and make hopefully relatively minor adjustments to their care plan to keep them healthier, longer, and, and at home. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like that, again, is really, you know, helping in certain ways regionally democratize care, really ensure that, you know, veterans are able to access a quality of care and, and upkeep their health irrespective of, you know, where they live. Because, again, so many veterans live within rural areas and might otherwise, you know, have a certain degree of challenges that it sounds like, you know, your work and that of VA as a whole is really helping address in a very structural kind of way. And to get down to uh, another kind of structural question, I'm wondering on a, a broader technical level in terms of the necessary infrastructural support, how are other departments within VA helping provide the IT support and data integration necessary to make use of, you know, remote monitoring and wearables and the like in terms of healthcare? 
Absolutely. So the chief technology office has been amazing to work with and the VA's electronic healthcare modernization will certainly play a larger role in collaboration with OCC as we continue to drive change forward. But again, the, the ongoing collaboration between all program offices at the central office and even at the station level remains optimally important to continue to drive modernization and improvement and innovation moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm wondering, taking all that into consideration, what areas of healthcare, you know, thus far have you seen the greatest improvements or the greatest uh, innovation in terms of, you know, remote monitoring and wearables? We talked a bit about diabetes. Are there other areas that have been really promising and have shown very serious returns so far? Absolutely. So continuous glucose monitoring, CGM is a big platform, remote CPAP monitoring. There are certainly a large um, areas of expansion in cardiology and spirometry. I think the sky is the limit. As, soon as, as long as VA can ensure that the infrastructure is appropriately established, we, we should be able to keep up with the ever-changing technological advances. What we are working on at the moment is the establishment of the procurement pathway the funding mechanisms for remote patient monitoring solutions. So how do providers seamlessly order these devices in a way that can, can ensure quick and timely access for veterans? Definitely. And it sounds like a big part of that is really kind of like smoothing the passage between adoption from industry, because it sounds like, again, there, there are a certain degree of industry partners that would maybe potentially provide you no know, solutions or support. And I'm imagining your office and those adjacent to you do a certain degree of standardization in that process as well. Absolutely. That, that is the key. At this, at this point, it's sometimes there's, it seems to be piecemeal and we're really working hard with prosthetics and sensory aid services and patient care business services to identify a procurement pathway and a funding strategy for FY23 and beyond to continue to support expansion of remote patient monitoring solutions. Yeah, so looking forward, I'm wondering, uh, where do you see, broadly speaking, structurally in terms of, you know, big projects and goals going forward? And let's say the next, you know, one, two, three years, where do you see VA's development of its both specific solutions and the supporting infrastructure going in terms of driving its use of innovation and remote uh, monitoring forward? I do believe the Office of Connected Care will begin developing the, the, the infrastructure necessary to re support remote patient monitoring solutions for the entire enterprise, not just for each individualized program. So we do have the stop codes available, but we, we struggle with putting the cart before the horse. We want to make sure that we have the procurement pathway and the funding strategies necessary to support these solutions. We, we know that they exist and we want to import them as fast as we can, but if we can't pay for them and we can't deliver them in some systematic way, uh, we're going to be, we're really going to struggle. Yeah, I can imagine. It sounds like really taking this and scaling it to a enterprise-wide kind of nationwide singular approach that gives that, you know, large structural uh, approach to the entirety of VA while making it flexible is, you know, both very promising, but also might, you know, be a certain degree of challenge that you're all working on. So that all makes, you know, perfect sense. And, uh, you know, kind of before we wrap up here, Dr. Riegler, I'm wondering, is there anything, you know, that we didn't really touch on, but you would like to emphasize or like our audience to know about the work you're doing with the Office of Connected Care or where VA, you know, might really be driving these kinds of things forward? Yeah, I think the Office of Connected Care and the Office of Healthcare Innovation and Learning are really breaking down boundaries. We're ensuring that veterans have the care that they need, the access that they need at the time that they need it, the place that they need it. And I don't know that that's necessarily readily available in the private sector. VA sometimes doesn't get the recognition it needs for the innovation that they're doing and ensuring timely access to, to care, whether that be in the convenience of their home environment at a community-based outpatient clinic or at their local VAMC. Yeah, absolutely. I remain persistently impressed by the sheer amount of ingenuity that comes out of VA. You know, it's it's always a privilege to interview people on this program who, you know, have that kind of expertise and are making a very serious, you know, difference in the lives of those who come to VA for care and for support. Uh, again, you know, Dr. Riegler, this was an absolute privilege. Thank you for coming onto the program. Thank you for having me. HealthCast, along with GovCast and CyberCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to govciomedia.com. Watch out for new episodes released every Tuesday and Wednesday across our shows. You can follow all of them in your favorite podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at gcio.com.